Chiofen, a mountainous town less than an hour's drive from Taipei City, is most well known for being the spirited away place, with its hanging red lanterns and narrow alleyways. And of course, the main crowd puller is the Ame Tea House, that closely resembles the bathhouse where spirits go to clean themselves in the film. Although Miyazaki denies that there is any connection, the movie-inspired tourism is great for this former gold mining town that actually went into decline after the gold rush. But the film that actually brought Jiufen back to life was this 1989 film by Ho Xiaoxian that won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival. A City of Sadness is a landmark piece of Taiwanese cinema and is the film to watch if you'd like to learn more about Taiwan before you visit. It's also one of Tony Leung's earlier films, so it's a must-watch for this fact alone. The film broke away from mainstream Chinese cinema of the time and portrayed the more mundane daily life of Taiwanese people. It also brought up the issue of the February 28 massacre in which tens of thousands of Taiwanese were killed. The mountains, ocean, and narrow winding roads of Jiufen were the perfect backdrop for the beautiful cinematography of the film. Watching it definitely gave me a different lens on Jiufen when I visited and invited me to try slowing down my pace, which honestly wasn't easy with the busyness of the tourists. There are so many of them. I took a direct bus 965 from Taipei. It was super convenient and pretty cheap as well. 90 NTD on the easy card. I've linked a video below by YouTuber Aiki, which is an amazing detailed description of all the ways to get to Jiufen. I stopped at the Jiufen police station, which is a stop away from Old Street where most people stop because from the map, my accommodation looked a lot closer, but it was actually the wrong place because I had to climb this really steep hill to get right to the top of Jiufen Old Street with my giant backpack. Why did I not bring my rolly bag? Oh well, if I had brought my rolly bag, this would be way worse. <laughs> And then to add to my adventure, it started raining, so I had to get out my giant raincoat. Oh my god, the uncle downstairs, he looked at me and he was like, <laughs> which means like, oh you're suffering, <laughs> it's tiring. And he gave me a lucky peanut. And I'm here, I see it right over there. <gasps> I made it. I booked a night at the Ocean Theory B&B and I was impressed from the get-go. The design theme is definitely inspiring for travellers, reminding us of a history where people used compasses to go on voyages and where travel was not tourism but a discovery of new lands. The owner is definitely into crystals because that's another main design feature here which was amazing because I also happen to be quite a lover of crystals. The rooms are super comfortable and the design scheme made me feel like I was right at the ocean, which I was. The view of Jiufen at night did not disappoint and with the lights and the rain, the atmosphere was quite mystical. I got some taro balls for dessert and completely crashed from the exhaustion of my hike. I slept for 10 hours and woke up completely refreshed to a really awesome buffet breakfast that I got to enjoy whilst taking in the beautiful views of Jiufen.
Then it was time to head out to explore the town. Right at the very top of the hill, there's Akanyi Taro Ball, the most famous taro dessert in Jiufen, which I had the night before. The taste is very authentic and different to the sugary stuff that we get in Malaysia. The queue is long, but it's honestly worth it. There is so much to eat, to see and to buy, so make sure you bring enough money to visit Jiufen. And be sure to also check out this lookout point where you get stunning views of the entire hillside sloping towards the ocean. I initially wanted to get tea at the famous Ame Tea House, but it was so packed and noisy, I decided to visit the alternatives next to it, the Sweet Potato Tea House, which you have to go through a stone tunnel to get through. This tunnel was built to reach the gold mines back in the Qing Dynasty, so the journey of walking through it already is a great start to the tea house experience. The atmosphere here is completely different to the hustle of the famous Ame Tea House. It's peaceful and calm, featuring vintage and antique Taiwanese artworks. There weren't many people, so I got to have some much-needed quiet time taking in the scenery away from the crowds. I got the basic tea set, which cost 300 NTD. The oolong tea comes with crackers, green bean cookies and preserved plum and includes a simple guide on the Kung Fu Cha ceremony and how to use the various utensils which I will now share with you. The most important element of tea is of course the boiling water which is prepared in a giant clay teapot and placed right next to you on a charcoal stove. The tea leaves are scooped out from the tea caddy into the teapot. Boiling water is poured into the teapot, and the first round is used to sterilize the teacups and infuse them with the tea's aroma. The next round of hot water is to warm up the teapot, allowing better heat isolation when the tea is being steeped. Bear in mind that this is actually a super simplified process of what is in fact a detailed, artful and calm process. The tea is then poured into what is called a fairness cup. So the logic behind this is, the longer you steep tea, the stronger it can get. Which means that if you pour directly from a teapot, the first few guests will receive a light strain, whereas the ones you pour to last will get a stronger brew. But when you pour it into a fairness cup or a tea ocean, as what it's called in Taiwan, every serve will be the same taste of tea. The tea is then poured into aroma-smelling cups and covered with an empty teacup. The tea artist then quickly reverses the two cups to transfer the tea into the teacup, inviting the guests to hold the aroma-smelling cup to their nose to sniff in its fragrance. The correct way to hold the wenxiang bei is with the thumb and index finger. And then after all of that, you can finally drink the tea. As the last stop of my Jiufen trip, I visited the historic Shengping Theatre, which has been around since the 1900s. There's a really cool display here where you can check out the drinks and types of snacks that they used to sell at the movie theatre. Everything is very well preserved here, so it's almost like you're stepping into a time capsule. 
At the height of its popularity, the entire place would be packed out with people, filling up both floors and standing in the aisles. To me, this movie theatre is an important part of Jiufen, a town that was actually reborn from the film industry, allowing people to be reminded of the beauty of this magical coastal town.